In complex projects with lots of moving parts, it's always the little details that are overlooked. Small errors compound over time and will ultimately impact your work in a negative way. Hello, I'm Jack Wang, a microbiologist and science educator based in Australia. And on this channel, we walk through the skills scientists need to succeed. Today, we're talking about pipetting, moving small volumes of liquid from one tube to another. It wasn't until the first year of my PhD, four or five years into my training, that I realized that my pipetting accuracy was much worse than it should be. Everyone assumed I should already know this, so nobody took the time to retrain me. It was super embarrassing actually, and I had to figure out where I was going wrong on my own. Hopefully this video makes the process easier for you to reverse engineer your own technique. Let's get right into it, starting with the range of pipettes, which vary in size and the volume of liquid they can dispense. P1000, P200, P20, P2 can pipette a maximum of 1000, 220, and 2 microliters respectively. These volumes are usually printed on the plunger button of the pipette, and to decrease the volume dispensed, turn the friction wheel clockwise and vice versa to increase the volume. Always know the upper limit of the pipette you're working with. When you try and go outside this range, not only will this damage the pipette, it will also affect its accuracy. We're not working with big volumes here, so even a small miscalibration can lead to dramatic differences in volume and concentration. How do we work with volumes of liquid more than one milliliter? Buffers and nutrient media are often hundreds of milliliters. We can pour the liquid into measuring cylinders and use the bottom of the curve of the concave meniscus to gauge the volume. Motorized pipette controllers with specialized single-use pre-wrapped pipette tips can dispense 5, 10, 25 mils in a more accurate and reproducible way. On the pipette controllers, there's usually one button to draw up liquid and one button to dispense liquid. After you're done, make sure the long pipette tips are disposed of in the right bin. Coming back to smaller volumes of liquid, pass-through or transfer pipettes are very quick and easy. They're often single-use and pre-sterilized, lowering the chances of contamination. And there is much less control though, with no clear indication of volume dispensed. Standard pipettes are much more accurate and there are a variety of pipette tips for different types of pipette. P2, P200 and P1000 are shown here. To best illustrate how your technique affects the volume dispensed, let's work with the largest pipette in the series, the P1000. We will draw up 700 microliters of fluid by first setting the volume, then pushing the plunger down to the first stop before submerging the pipette tip into the liquid. Slowly release the plunger and 700 microliters will be drawn into the pipette tip. Now move to the tube you wanna add the liquid to and push down the plunger of the pipette to the first stop. You can still see a bit of liquid left in the pipette at this point. This is still part of the 700 microliters we want in the final tube. So you need to push beyond the first stop to the second stop to dispense all of the liquid remaining accurately. This is where a lot of the confusion and accuracy can come in. Some people push past the first stop before drawing up liquid, so they are drawing up more than what they want. Some do not push past the first stop when dispensing the liquid, constantly leaving behind some liquid in the pipette tip. When you are done, eject your tip into a sharp spin by pressing down on the tip ejector mechanism. These differences are easy to visualize for a relatively large volume in a P1000 pipette. When we go down to a P2 pipette, drawing up only two microliters or less, it is very difficult to see any minute differences in volume. You'll need to rely on your technique more than seeing changes in volume with the naked eye. Remember to push to the first stop before drawing up liquid. And with dispensing liquid, push to the second stop. How you hold the pipette may also affect your accuracy. Ideally, you want to hold the pipette as upright as possible when drawing up liquid. When dispensing, we try to do so at a slight angle to gently pipette the liquid to avoid splashes or aerosols. Many of the experiments in modern molecular biology examine thousands of samples at a time. How does the one tube at a time pipetting we just showed you translate into that environment? First of all, we can use multi-channel pipettes. This can draw liquid and dispense into multiple samples or wells at the same time. In this example, we're working with 96 oil plates and a multi-channel pipette that can accommodate eight wells at once. The liquid to be dispensed needs to be placed into a trough that can fit all the tips on a multi-channel pipette. Make sure each of the tips has been fitted properly by pressing down firmly when fitting the tips. With the setup, it just takes 12 repeats to fill all the wells on this plate rather than 96 individual repeats. If we have dozens of 96 well plates to process, laboratories are increasingly incorporating robotics into their workflow. We program the robots to automatically dispense the same volume across hundreds if not thousands of wells, and this is much more accurate across the board. This is very common in DNA sequencing platforms. You can find our video on DNA sequencing in the description below. Looking back on when I first found out my pipetting technique was deeply flawed, how did I figure out where the inaccuracies were coming from? 
Like any hands-on skill, it comes down to practice and monitoring your progress over time. One milliliters of water should weigh one gram and 0.1 mil or 100 microliters of water should weigh 0.1 grams. You can repeatedly pipette the same volume multiple times, weigh it, and then assess the variation of weight across your repeats. It won't be exactly 0.1 gram every time, but you can get a sense of how much the volume varies. A simpler way to do this is to pipette onto filtered paper repeatedly and look at the diameter of the liquid droplet diffused onto the paper. It should be consistent in size if you're pipetting the same volume each time. In longer experiments, your hands will get tired over time as well, so these exercises will give you a sense of when your accuracy begins to taper off due to fatigue. There's no secret to this, it just takes repetition and practice until you're happy with your technique. Out of all of the techniques we've talked about on this channel, by far the most requested topic from science teachers is pipetting. When we speak to employers, this is also the skill that most young scientists struggle with in their first job after graduation, along with transferable skills like communication and collaboration. It's not anything overly complex, but instead a foundational skill we assume everyone has already mastered and it pays to have a solid foundation in everything we do. This is the Biolab Collective. I'm Jack Wang and I'll see you in the next video.